I'm Zach Schaefer, and I'm a myrmecologist, a biologist, and educator at Arizona State University. And I want to tell you about my paper, The Foundress's Dilemma. So ants, with their societies, they're sort of like these alien civilizations on our own planet. And when we look at ants, many of us are drawn to them because we see something of ourselves in them. So when it comes time for a queen to start a colony, the young virgin queens leave the nest, they fly up in the air, and male ants also have wings and track them down and they actually mate in the air. Queen then lands on the ground and then she has to dig in and start a family of her own. And she's responsible for everything, foraging or just feeding her babies with just her body fat. At the same time, everything wants to eat her in the, in the natural world. It's very challenging for a queen to start a new colony. Sometimes there's this odd phenomenon where queens will actually cooperate together to start a colony. And in a species or population, it's usually one method or the other, go it alone or work together. But in the species we study, P. californicus, which is the California seed harvester ant, we find both strategies present in the same populations. So you find queens that tend to go it alone and also queens that will work together. The Foundress's Dilemma is about this question of whether or not a queen should cooperate or not, an evolutionary question, and really it's a bit of a mystery. So we collected ant queens of both types from this population, we brought them into the lab and we observed them for 60 days. Many of the ants were very aggressive and so within a day or two they started biting, attacking, they're more peaceful nestmates. We would see severed heads, severed abdomens, and just a lot of death and destruction. And so really the big question was, why are there even any cooperative queens in this population? How do they survive if they end up dead from having this random you know, bad roommate? What we saw is when we compared the individual survival, the aggressive queens were the ones that had the longest survival in their nests. But if you compared the survival of whole groups that were peaceful to whole groups that had violence, the peaceful groups outlasted the aggressive groups. So we wanted to understand the broader context of this phenomenon. And so several of my colleagues designed a model, a simulation of the ecological factors that might influence the founder's dilemma. But what circumstances would we expect one or the other type to take over? So you can actually download the simulation and try it for yourself. So the model suggested that density, how close the colonies were to one another, or how much they interacted with one another, would predict uh, which behavioral type would prevail. Another colleague of ours went out into the field and actually mapped out the locations of the colonies and he found that indeed the predictions of the model were supported. So the idea is that in, in regions where you have a saturation of mature colonies, that there's an intense competition so that, such that queens almost have to band together if they want to have a chance to survive. But in areas where the colonies are more spread out, a solitary queen would have a fighting chance by herself. So after concluding our study, what I really like to see is how common this process, which we call group selection, is in the natural world. And my feeling is that rather than being rare, this process is actually part of the glue that holds life together. So this study really grew out of the teaching of my professors here at Arizona State University. And many of my professors actually ended up being my co-authors on this study, as well as other uh, graduate students at the time. And so they all were my kind of spirit guides to try to uh, uh, tease apart this interesting biological mystery.